Hi, my name is Matthew Belisario. Welcome to another edition of the Belisario Sonic YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite rock guitar players who is not well known by very many people at all. Um, and his name is Frank Marino. Probably better known with his by his name Mahogany Rush, the, the band that he formed. Um, first record was released in 1972. And so today I want to talk about Frank because he's a fantastically underrated guitar player. And if you like classic rock music and you like that uh, intensity of like a Jimi Hendrix or a Roy Gallagher, that type stuff, you're going to dig Frank. So let's talk a little bit about him. Born in 1954 in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Um, learned guitar at a very young age and it's kind of a unique story because Frank evidently started using LSD when he was young around 13 years old and it messed him up it really messed up his um he, he started having all these crazy visions he couldn't come down off of it I, I guess he, and, and if you want to know more about Frank there's a lot of interviews with him on YouTube over the last five years or so and he gives all the stories about his life. It's very interesting, uh, very insightful guy, uh, very intelligent and uh, a great guitar player, a great songwriter. But at 13 years old, apparently he has to go into a hospital because of, of an LSD, a bad LSD trip and uh, could not get his mind focused on anything. So evidently somebody brought in a guitar or there was a guitar there uh, that, and, and he started playing. He's just started just focusing all of his attention onto this to get his mind off of the other stuff. And apparently really learned guitar very quickly and became very good at it very quickly. And uh, when he got out of the hospital, he started playing in these different bands, forming his own bands. And um, in 1972, gets a record deal. His first record called Max Soon. And... Uh, Starts to, to, to get along pretty well and uh, traveling around and, and, and uh, doing pretty well with his live music uh, performances. And then uh, releases in 1974 a record called Child of Novelty, which I think would uh, kind of propel him up to the next level. And um, he actually, in the mid 70s, this is Child of Novelty record, fantastic record uh he, in the 70s he actually starts playing on these festival circuits with these big bands he, he beca he's an opener for a lot of these big bands and uh the record company wants to pretty much run run what he you know run his life like they always they did back then and uh he didn't get along with these record execs very well and he wanted to do his own thing so apparently he negotiated his own contracts uh, this is a, a 20th Century Records, which is a subsidiary of 20th Century Fox. So this is 1974. Apparently, he, he gets his own deal, does it the way he wants to do it. Songs are fantastic. This album just rocks. And um, so goes on tour with these big bands, these, these popular bands, and doesn't get along with them very well either. They, apparently... You know the egos involved with a lot of these bands uh, didn't make it a very conducive environment for an opening act. And um, you know I've been to a lot of concerts in my life, and uh, the opening band really gets the short end of the stick a lot of times. I've heard the sound absolutely terrible, and then the neck, the, the 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 main act comes on, and all of a sudden the sound is absolutely perfect. You can hear everything; it's a good mix. The band before them got shafted. Anyway, I digress. But uh, apparently he did not get along well with a lot of these big bands either. Wanted to do things his own way. And I think that's probably why he also didn't become a big name like he should have. Um, 1975, cool record called Strange Universe. I was actually able to find this one brand new. And um, of course, Frank, very talented guy. Plays guitar, plays bass, can play drums. On this one, he plays the Moog synthesizer on Strange Universe. Um, and you see these, these covers here, um, especially on these two records, Child of Novelty and Strange Universe. Um, 
these are kind of, uh, he said, representative on the kind of crazy stuff that he saw on, on these, this LSD trip. So kids out there, uh, stay away from drugs. Um, but he got his, got his life straight. He's out there touring, playing with these big acts. He's putting out records. This is a, his uh, fourth record, Mahogany Rush 4, 1976. Great album. Uh, Man at the Back Door, The Answer is one of my favorite songs by Frank called The Answer. And uh, that's on this record here. Uh, you can find his records uh, if you look, and they're just hard to find in good shape. So I, I got a couple copies, for example, of this this live record from 78. Great record. Um, has has quite a bit of a heavy sound to it. And again, a lot of the Hendrix influence, but he's got his own way of playing, his own vocabulary. And uh, the answer's on here on the King B. A new rock and roll, Johnny B. Good, a good version of that. Um, a really cool song called The World Anthem that I really like and a cool version of Purple Haze. If you can get your hands on this, I usually see this quite uh, around quite a bit at record stores. This is this was probably, probably one of his best-selling records, this live record. And so I've got two of them. One's a little bit better shape than the other. But I would pick that up if you see it in good shape. If you like classic uh, heavy rock, you're going to dig this record, so I, I recommend it for sure. What's next? This is a 1980 record. Now, Frank recorded all the way up until um, he recorded consistently from 72 up until like 82, and then did a record in 86, did one in 2000, and then has since then released a couple of live albums as well. So I'm going to show you those. Now, I don't have all of his stuff on record. I've got some things on, on a CD, and I've also got a really cool DVD set that I want to show you because if there's one thing that you can get your hands on that I would recommend is going to be this awesome DVD Blu-ray set. I'm going to show you this, so stick around. Um, let me show you a couple more of the albums. Juggernaut, this is a fantastic classic rock record. This is 1982. Um, most of his records didn't reach up into uh, the top 100. I think... Uh, the Child of Novelty reached number 74 in the U.S. charts. Strange Universe reached number 84. And uh, what's next, the one I just showed you, was reached number um, 88 in the U.S. So not a big you know, chart-topping artist, but he did things his own way. And the songs are, are fantastic, in my opinion. This one here has got uh, Juggernaut on it, which I really like. And Stories of a Hero, I really like that tune. So I got two copies of that again because uh, the first copy I got, it's, you know, not the best shape. And so I was able to pick up another one. Now, I want to talk about these two recent releases, Record Store Day releases. And uh, these were put on, on, on vinyl for Record Store Day over the last couple of years. And it's Real Live Volume 1 and Volume 2. These are great. Get your hands on these. You can still find these online. So um, good sound quality and you've got all of the great... Frank tunes on here, Strange Universe, um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Ain't Dead Yet. Um, you've got Jazz the Moment, which is pretty cool. Little interlude to the Tales of the Unexpected, really cool song. World Anthems on here, I like that. Uh, and a cool uh, Try for Freedom on this at the end. On this one here, this is Volume One. You got Voodoo Child. Uh, you've got Something's Coming Our Way, which I absolutely love that. He's Calling. I love that tune. Um, Stories of a Hero's on here. Poppy is on here. Cool version of Crossroads. This is, this is great stuff. Great classic rec rock. And uh, nice gatefold here. And this dude just, this dude rocks. Now, if there's one thing that you're going to get that I would recommend getting, it would be this DVD Blu-ray set recorded live at the Agora in Ohio. And this is absolutely phenomenal. So let me tell you a little bit about this. Live at the Agora comes with DVDs and with the Blu-ray. Everything is on one Blu-ray. The, the, the quality is excellent. Sound quality is excellent. The video quality is excellent. And um, you get three DVDs, a Blu-ray, and a 180-page book. 
And this is really cool too, because this goes through his whole story. And um, this is over six hours, guys, of music. It's like 99 bucks. It's worth every penny. If you go to his website, just type in Frank Marino, go to his website. He's got them for sale on there. And you got the pictures, the stories. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic. So th this guy is so underrated. It's a shame. Right now, he's not in very good health, apparently. And um, he's uh, recovering. He just did a, an, an interview over the last week or so talking about his new guitar pedals that are coming out. He's got a boost pedal coming out, a distortion pedal coming out, and, and something else. I think he's got three coming out. And, um, but uh, the guy, you know, I've listened to several of his interviews on YouTube, and he, he just sounds like a fun guy, and a fun guy to chat with, and he's got a good sense of humor. He's got a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, stories to tell you about his experience playing in the 70s rock music with wearing the the big uh, platform shoes and all this kind of stuff but uh so the guy's got a great sense of humor but if there's one thing if you're just going to spend the money on one thing for for you know if, if you're not going to get a record i would get this blu-ray dvd set and you got six hours the guy just play and they play straight through and this is not even everything i think there's like another hour and a half or two hours they played like eight hours on one, I think one day, they showed up at the Agora Theater and filmed the whole thing straight through. Had, had some problems too with, uh, I believe, with the audio, and had he had to go back and painstakingly fix it all uh, before he could release it. So um, this is a really cool. I really recommend it. You're gonna dig it if you like that heavy guitar playing, that heavy blues infused Hendrixy kind of sound to it. You're gonna dig it. If uh, there's just a, a couple of vinyl records that are easy to get, I would get that live 1978 record and I would pick up the both volumes of the real live records that I just showed you. So Frank Marino, go out and get it, go check him out, pull him up on YouTube and uh, pick up his records. And I think you're gonna, you'll have another great guitar player and great songwriter that's not well known and deserves to be known. So that's for today's episode. That's all I got. And we'll talk to you jazz nerds coming up tomorrow. Take care.